Hello, I'm Sarita. Most of us know me as a team member or tech lead. Today's topic is to learn Python or synchronous programming. Hey, I don't like sessions. How much is it worth? We are here to learn, not for both. I request you to unmute yourself to give the answers and ask the questions. Let's start to learn asynchronous programming in Python with an example. A chess exhibition where one of the most chess player, uh, one of the best chess player competes against a lot of people. If there are the 24 games with 24 people to play, uh, to play with, and the chess masters play with all of them synchronously, it will take at least 12 hours. But using a synchronous mode gives the chess master the opportunity to make a move and leave the opponent thinking while going to the next one, making a move there. This way, a move or all 24 games can be done in two minutes and all of them can be won in just a one hour. So that is what's mean when people talk about asynchronous being really fast. It's this kind of the fast. The chess master doesn't play chess faster. The time is just more optimized and it's not waste on waiting around. This is how it works. In this analogy, the chess master will be our CPU. And the idea is that we want to make sure that the CPU doesn't wait or wait the least amount of time possible. It's about always finding some thing to do. A practical definition of asynchronous is that it's a style of concurrent programming in which task release the CPU during the waiting period so that other tasks can use it. In Python, there are several ways to achieve concurrency based on our requirement, code flow, data uh, manipulation, architecture designing use case, we can select any of these method like multi-process, multi-thread, uh, coroutine, uh, coroutine using yield. And in asynchronous programming, there is a two-way using a sync IO library and second is a asynchronous task using gravity. These are the way to implement asynchronous in Python. Here, our focus is to learn how can we implement asynchronous using asynchronous library. It is inbuilt library of Python. It supports in Python 3.7 and further higher version. I divide this session into two parts. In first part, we will try to understand the concept with small examples. In second part, the approach is completely practical based where you, uh, you learn concept, uh, you learn concept will be more clear. Here we are going to learn synchronous versus asynchronous coroutines, asynchronous event loop, asynchronous await keywords, task, asynchronous example. The asynchronous IO model, the asynchronous IO model come with the excellent features that allow us to write more efficient Python asynchronous application. We will explain how to manage asynchronous event loop in Python. Before dive deep into this topic, let's understand what is the asynchronous programming is. I think all of us went to the hotel and enjoy the delicious food party there. Really, you went to a restaurant only for delicious food? 
or is there some other reason behind it? On demand service, as per your mood, you can select any food from the menu list. Within a few minutes, hot hot food serve on your table. Do you think cheap uh, chefs prepare food synchronously? At least, have you think? Uh, have you thinking there is a dedicated uh, chef for each table? Hopefully, the answer is literally never. Cooking one dish at a time before moving into the next probably make for more prettily gross food and it's a totally inefficient. In synchronous programming, the method are returned to perform one task at a time. If function depend on the other function output, it has to wait to finish the execution of that function. The program is essentially stopped until the function finish its execution. It means that one program can get execution at a time. This slow down the program as it's supposed to stop and wait for something to finish. Many processes are available in the system, so it is waste of the resources to do other tasks rather than the idle side. To overcome this, a synchronous program concepts come into play. It behaves differently. It also takes one execution at a time, but the system may not wait to finish the execution to move on the next step. It means the processor doesn't sit idle. It, if the program will perform another task while the previous hasn't yet finished, and is still running elsewhere. What is the difference between asynchronous versus synchronous? Asynchronous is a non-blocking architecture, so the execution of one task is not depend on another. Task can run simultaneously. Synchronous. In synchronous, synchronous is a blocking architecture, so the execution of each operation is depend on the completion of the other operation. You can see in this PPT, there are the four processes, but in synchronous, it takes around 45 seconds. But in asynchronous mode, it takes around 20 seconds. So we can say asynchronous is more efficient than the synchronous. What is the asynchronous I.O. or asynchronous? An asynchronous I.O. is a Python library which is used to run concurrent code using async wait keyword. It is foundation for the Python asynchronous framework that offer connection libraries, network, and web servers, database distribution task queue, High performance, it is. This model provides the framework that work around the event loop and also take care such thing as a I/O and system event. You can see this example here. We include the a synchro I/O library here, and there is a one function that is a main function inside. Uh, where the async uh, sync is a keyword which is used here. It is used to say this is a asynchronous function. And inside you can see a wait function. And how we can be call this function by using this run function. Will be explained later. Okay, just it is a one example. Will be check all these things in practical approach. In this code, we have imported the asynchronous model to get access of Python asynchronous function, the create primary function, and write the asynchronous keyword in front of that. This will allow the program to run the task asynchronously. Inside the for loop, you can see uh, you can see the sleep method is there, where the uh, which forces us to wait for one second. The program print hello after one second. Program should have one run function as well as one main function 
which is a asynchronous function. A synchronous program is a type of programming in which we can execute more than one task without blocking the main task. In Python, there are many ways to execute more than one function concurrently. One of the way is using a synchro IO uh, library. A synchronous function uh, programming allows you to write the concurrent code, uh, concurrent code that run in a single thread. Asynchronous doesn't use the thread or multiprocessing to make the program asynchronous. Coroutine with asynchronous IO. What is a coroutine? Coroutine are the general control structure whereby flow control is cooperatively passed between the two different routines without returning. In asynchronous IO, coroutine can be created by using the keyword async before the definition of the function. You can check here, there is a async is a keyword. We say that this function, uh, this method or this routine is a coroutine. If you try to run asynchronous function directly, you will get runtime warning. To run a synchronous function, you have to call it using a event loop. You can see this code. In this code, we have imported a synchronous library and time module. Then we define the execute function here with the delay and value argument. It prints the delay time using a slip method. In the main function, we have passed two arguments. First is a delay time, and second is the value to be printed. The program starts its execution and print the exact execution time. Print hello, then wait for two seconds and print word and stop. We'll be check this how it is executed or uh, how it is uh, running in python okay let's understand the concept of the coroutine here only next creating task creating task method will run in the event loop with its result put in the task we have to schedule the two tasks and return them using a bit will be checked with the help of the example okay uh, let me check i have some examples here let's try to understand the each and every concept here we did here we input the asynchronous io and we define one coroutine with the keyword async if i try to execute this coroutine you as we do are using a asynchronous programming it is returning the coroutine object okay we cannot invoke by using just like a calling in asynchronous functioning. How we can call? You can see there is a, uh, sometimes it may be, uh, may be uh, raise an error like that, runtime error, coroutine main, we never update and run the, enable the trace lock to get the object allocation trace back, okay? Now I will try using a await main, Yeah, what it say? A weight is outside the function. Means where a weight should be placed, it should be placed inside a coroutine. Now I'm going to run this utility using the run function. It will 
oh it will run okay you can see the print command is executed here so this is the way by through which you can run the synchronous program Now I am going to run this program. Here we write one the coroutine. Now I am going to define the another coroutine. Now I am going to execute that coroutine using a run function. How it execute? What run function call the main function? And in main function, first Sarita one is print. After that, it calls the foo fun uh, foo function here, and where the learning mate is the uh, parameter pass that is print. And after that, it is sleep for five seconds. You can check it. And after that, you will get the our prompt. Okay. If I'm going to run this same function without using a wait here. Okay. This is the code where we I'm not using a, a wait inside the main. You can see here it is just normal invocation of the function. Okay, I'm just calling the function. What you can see, you can see there is an error, and that is the same error when you are trying to use the or uh, run this function without the run. Okay, means to invoke the asynchronous function, you have to use the run as well as to call it. You should be you you can't use like this. Okay, any doubt here? Anyone have any doubt? Yeah, sir. Uh, hi. Yeah. Yeah. One question. Like uh, if we uh, if we remove the async keyword from the foo method, okay, mm -hmm. and we call them uh, from the main method without uh, writing the await, okay? Yeah, this is okay. a normal. You can say this is your normal method. You can invoke, but you cannot be right. Uh, just we can be check it by running this, okay? What is this? Uh, await is uh, uh, outside of a sync function. Yeah. Okay. For await, there should be a this uh, a sync keyword before this. Okay. And if, if we uh, yes, if we delete this one, it will work. Okay. okay. Oh, sorry, sleep. I, I just delete. I don't have to add this. 
okay this is your normal function okay it is not a synchronous function you can't use that like it yeah can you see after that there is a no any delay to see the command prompt because in previous code there is a, a wait for five seconds but in this code there is a nothing okay okay so you can say this is a sync combination of synchronous and asynchronous in this program you can say this is your asynchronous function method and it is your synchronous method you can use it okay okay let me come back to our basic concept i think we learned the menu of this uh, First, we'll learn the, what is the task. After that, we'll be run the task here. Okay. Mm. Okay. Actually, a waiting is also uh, a wait keyboard is also used to block the code. You can see uh, in the previous code. Let let me run this one. Okay. I will demonstrate what is the difference between and what is the exact use of the a wait keyboard. What's happened here? This call the main function. After that, Sarita one is print. After that, it's called the foo function here. Okay. And after that, what is here? They wait for one second. In the same time, the main finish, uh, it will display the learning main. And after that, it's returned back to main uh main finished print okay if you use this await foo after the main finished okay it may be possible that uh, it print the sarita one after that print the main finish and after that it will print the learning mate okay let me check it is how it is happening uh where it is exactly okay Okay, I will demonstrate it later you with this few examples. So let's first understand yeah. what is the task. Sarita, in, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, in this example, uh, so it is printing Sarita 1, then learning mid, then main finish, right? Yes. So it is printing serially. Yeah, it's a, you can think la, now it is a printing serially, but it, actually it is not printing serially. A wait is waiting for completing the full um, uh, miss uh, food should be finished and after that it will go to the main finished okay so we'll be learn this in with the few of the many more example first we learn the basic concept where we want to add the much much more functionality we want to add here so first we want to understand what is the task what is the event loop and after that we'll be come back to the exam with the example where we will be defined more than the one or two um, asynchronous uh, pro, uh, for methods and how it is executed parallelly we'll be see okay so let we move on our ppt Uh, if you use the create task method, it will be faster to uh, miss. It will take less time as compared to uh, compared to the uh, without the create task. Create task method will run in the event loop with its result put into the, in the task. Will be schedule the two tasks and return them using await. Now managing. A synchronous event loop in Python. Let me understand the work. Async IO is also used for managing async event loop. A event loop is an object that runs async function and callbacks. When we want to execute coroutines, the event will be crucial for the asynchronous function. When we run the async run method, the event loop object is created automatically. 
to implement the more advanced server we will, uh, we will need a lower level access to the event loop we will need work directly with the event loop intervals the event loop come with the following feature it can regi register execute and cancel the delay calls it can create client and server transports for communication it can create sub process and transport for communication with another program the delicate function call to pull the threads event loop you can think event loop loop as a function to run a synchronous task and call back perform a network io operation and run the sub processes We'll be check the uh, example of this uh, event loop and everything later. Okay, let's we move to this some read write data with this stream in Python. Okay, let's understand the concept. We'll be demonstrate this everything later. The asynchronous I/O model offer a stream that is used to perform high level network input output. It can behave as a server for network requests. It is the base for long-running network operation where application blocks are waiting for some other resources to return the results. The stream reader and stream writer. There are the two classes of the asynchronous I.O. which is used to read and write from the network at high level. To read from the network, we need to open the network using the async io dot open connection the stream reader and stream writer objects function return the tuples which would use the read write method to each connection the async start server method is used to receive the connection from the remote host the function task uh, sorry the function takes the callback function client con uh, connected cb as argument it is called whenever the function receives the request synchronization task in python we will discuss earlier asynchronous programs run separately but sometimes we would want to communicate with each other the sync IO module offer us the queue and various other methods to establish the synchronization between the tasks. Let us understand queue. Asynchronous IO queue facilitate asynchronous functions to line up the Python objects to be consumed by other sync function. For example, the workload distribution between the function on its behavior. Synchronous primitive. The Asynchronous I.O. feature locks the event conditions and semaphores act as a conventional Python uh, counterpart. Here, a point should be always keep in mind that these methods are not thread safe. This isn't an issue for asynchronous tasks running in same event loop. But we need to use the thread model to share the information between the tasks. when we can use the asynchronous program when we want to compute the work in quick time the delay involved wait for the input output operation not computation when many i operations are happen at once asynchronous module allows us to perform multiple tasks in parallel iterates through the efficient without blocking the rest of the application some of the tasks are given below which can be worked well with the asynchronous like a web scrapping network services uh, simul uh simultaneous database uh, sorry simul uh, simultaneous database now we'll be check one of the uh, some important function in a asynchronous io running asynchronous io program first how we can run we can just uh, you see 
asynchronous dot run and uh, you can invoke here any asynchronous method this function is used to block the execution of the execution for delay second it suspend the current task and allow another task to run the delay is the argument that shows the number of second you can say here yeah, this is the delay of one second creating task how you can create the task you have to use the asynchronous io dot create task and the name of the function here you can use this task name later for the await or with the uh, combination of the await keyword will be check the um, will be learn this example okay that sleeping you can invoke the sleep method here for um, delaying the processes or the waiting for the few seconds here here timeout if you want to uh, time out your functional and you uh, miss if you define that particular uh, this function is used to wait for the uh, particular coroutine for the specific uh, time if that time is um, miss uh, you, you that time cross then it will be through the timeout error and you can print the timeout statement here let me learn from a asynchronous ex example of asynchronous Okay, think we done till this. Okay, now I'm going to. Okay, now we want to run the task using a task statement. Okay, so let me run this program on our command prompt. Can you check the output? Here, Sarita Man is come first. Okay. After that, learning met. And after that, main finished. But here, Sarita Man come. And instead of main finish at the end, it is printing before the learning met. Can anyone demonstrate me how what happened here? I don't understand what is the difference between first program and second program. It's waiting for the task to finish. Yeah, in first program, it is waiting for the task finish. But in second program, you can, it is not waiting. It is just going ahead and printing a main finish. And after that, this task is running and it will print the learning. So I don't understand about how it is asynchronously work. Yes, you can say it is not blocking the execution of the main process. It is executing while the your calling function is also executing at a time. Okay. Yes. Anyone have doubt here? Let me move with the. Does it use multi processing or multi threading? No, it is not using a multiprocessing or multithreading. I already uh, said you, it, this is an asynchronous library where the you can run the parallelly multiple processes if they uh, they are candidates for the uh, asynchronous. But if you, are, if you are miss your program need a, a dependency on someone, then you have you can use the await also if you want to implement asynchronous with dependency okay 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 thank you now you if you want to change the sequence of tasks so how you can change you miss you have a uh, miss uh, this library provide us the way how you can change the flow of your program let me see what do you uh, what do you observe here after the learning metric it is waiting for few seconds and after that main finish has happened why it is so what is the difference between this previous program and this program here you created the task and you wait the task end like the this program okay 
here await with the, this task uh, variable is waiting here to finish the uh, this foot uh, foo method uh, execution and after that the main finished will invoke okay any doubt no if you want to pre miss uh, execute your main uh, method first and after um, um, you don't want to give the priority to the at particular called routine so you can use the await task after this main finish where you want to stop the means uh, give the priority to that core routine to execute it first then you can use that place await task so we'll be check with the few example now add the two second of delay here Okay, likewise it is, I think it is the same thing. Okay. Well, what is the difference you can see here? It is a, after the, this task invoke, it is not waiting for completing the task. It is just forcing the delay to execution of this main finish line for two seconds because this food takes the two seconds. If you put the 10 seconds here and we delay the for two seconds, it may be possible the main finished will first complete before execution of this one. But we are using here print first. So it may be possible it is executing first. And after that, it is waiting for two, uh, two seconds. And at the, sorry, 10 seconds. Uh, I'm not placing two here. I'm placing 10 here. Okay, it will wait for 10 seconds and meanwhile time it is going here and it is waiting for 2 seconds and after that go into the main finish and after that if there is a some, uh, if there is a some few lines of, of code, then it will execute it after that. Okay, it may be happen here. I'm putting here 10 seconds. What will happen? And here I'm putting 0.5 seconds. So let's check. How it is work? How it works? I think it takes more time than this one while it is having a ten second. Let me modify the function here. Print. I'm putting here one here. Let's try to understand the flow. What's happened here? First line is print, but after Do that, this line is not printing because the main is finished and it is going ahead. If we put the wait task, okay, let me check here what happened. A wait task. Now it is waiting to complete the task, okay? In this case, the two will print after waiting 10 seconds. Are you understanding what is the concept behind? Hello? What happened in the first program, uh, the second line is not executed. In uh, second program, it is executed. Why it is executed? Because it is waiting to complete the task first. Okay. And after that, terminate the execution of the main. Yeah, it's the same thing I'm writing there.
now we'll be see the next program it's the same thing here now we want to execute the multiple coroutines parallel we miss as per the concept of asynchronous we say the, the uh, it is uh, running multiple processes at a time but how we can implement this one so let me learn this this example i will demonstrate this example to you let's check the what is the runtime what's happened here it is first the sarita one is print here after that this three task initiate and after that this print is executed and after whatever the actions is happening inside this function invocation what's happened here that's printing inside after the main finish okay I don't understand what is what's happening here. It's so parallelly running this three utility. You can uh, what we called first here. We call here the foo one. Okay. After that, after that, again one. It is running sequentially let me check the with the another example so we'll be uh, we will have clear idea here three functions i'm defining three functions where the i'm this is a your normal synchronous function and these two are the asynchronous function while the main is also asynchronous function so how it behave let me check So will we have the clear idea about so how it is happening? What's happened here? The main is called. After that, Sarita one is print. After that, task one is initiate. Okay, but task one is initiate and called. But before that, it is shift to the next line. It is printing task one finish. After that, task two finish same way task three finished okay after that it is calling a synchronous function okay and the synchronous function it is for executing sequentially so after the task three finish it is printing synchronous for learning my task four okay and after that it will print the task four finish and main finish but now it is waiting for the execution of the all these three methods which we called asynchronously. And it is invoking one by one. One, two, three. Okay. In a way, you can change the flow of your program. If you forcefully want to execute this task one first without going to the printing the next line. So you can uh, use the await task one. If suppose this uh, um, this uh, code is depend on your previous two calling, okay. So here you have to write down before this code await task one and task two. So in in a way you can remote your execution of your asynchronous program. Let me demonstrate with the use of the some, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it is also combination of synchronous or synchronous. Yeah, here, what we can see here, wait task one is, uh, miss, we are writing here, a wait task one. Miss, in this case, it will first finish and after that, it will go for the next one. Just we execute this one. I already demonstrated this. You can see after the task one, there is a five second delay. So here, after printing this line, it will be wait for five seconds to complete the task one 
and after that its execution go likewise the previous exam okay uh, what's the difference is okay this is not using a way a wait task one it is just waiting uh, or giving a time to execute the previous task to run it may be possible that task not run but it will wait for the few seconds to complete that okay it is waiting for two seconds and after that the main finished will print We are repeating this one or not? Okay, no, no. Yeah. With the um, this is a this is an example where we are forcefully delaying for the um, fraction of second, and after that we are waiting to complete the task one. Let's we run this one also to understand. After the Sarita one is print, it is going here, waiting for 10 seconds. And after that, it will print the full one text. And after that, it's go back and print the main finish. Here. Now we will go for the what's happened without wait. And if a our asynchronous function means that's a coroutine returning some value what will happen will be checked here okay copying this function What it's happened mean calls this one, okay? Task one is initiated. After that, task two, print a number and value is equal to. But here it is cannot be print the task one because task one is may be complete or may not be. So let me learn this. You can see this type of the error because the this function. The fish task running uh, is in a running, but it is trying to print the value which is returning from the that task one. With the task function running partially. How it is running partially? Let's check. Can anyone demonstrate me why it is not printing uh, eight nine? What ha happened here? Anyone can unmute and say why it is partially running. Hello. Is just checking the code. Yeah. So task one is await. We are awaiting task one. So value is printed for task one, but task two print numbers. Okay, task two, we are not awaiting, so its value is not uh, getting printed. Okay, to print this uh, return value, okay, it is printing, and after that, our task means main process will terminate without waiting for the task two. Should be, uh, miss it, uh, what it is doing, they don't care about the task two because we are not using here the await task two. And if you want to take any value return from your the asynchronous task, so what we have to use, you have to create the task, 
and assign that to, uh, to some variable and that variable gives us a value and that value will print here okay i don't understand how we'll take the return from the asynchronous function yes yeah, yes it, it's a returning one dictionary and we are uh, executing here that function and we, we get the value here and his this value we can do some type of modification here exactly where that value will print we can see make the modification let me run this code once again it may be possible the uh, output will different okay this very this value is print it is print inside the main not here anywhere now we want to execute the both the function first our target is to execute both the function completely after that we'll be uh, learn how we can remote the uh, which function should first run okay next we want to run the both the function completely. So what we were modification I did, just I add a wait task to command and you can change its uh, output is wrong. Now you can see after the save. Okay. So you what uh, what you can say about this? print number and phase data executing parallelly or not yes yes it is executing parallelly control is transferred to the first print number up to seven number is print after that control is transferred to the phase data it takes the return value and it's print and after that it's come back to the again print number and it is printing eight and nine that's a remaining task completed and after that your main function execution is terminated so in this case you can say these two methods or two coroutines runs parallelly and completely okay now we, we want what to run the fetch data first and after that we want to print a number so what we, uh, what modification you will do first you want to fetch data should execute so you have to add this await line before task, task two okay you can see here we use value render value let me see check this one is it work after that, we'll be uh, do the modification accordingly. You can see here, first task one is executed. And after that, task two is executed. You can use the await task one after this okay there is a no change after if you do likewise okay. now here what is our target running both function parallelly or and completely we achieve that one also there it's into very task two here something is missing i think task one is not printed not initiated here yeah and uh, you can uh, see here again here we are not creating the, any task we are uh, directly calling that function and waiting for the execution and for the second we are creating the task 
so you can do both way but if you use the create task it will uh, miss a, your execution time will uh, reduce uh, reduce as compared to if you use the await keyword with the your uh, coroutine okay let me run the both after that phase data we want the first run the print number and we want the executive fetch data after that so you can change accordingly okay i think you understand what is the asynchronous io what is how we can use the sync keyword a wait keyword and how, how we can create the task there how we can change the uh, sequence of execution how we can execute two independent uh, method or functions uh, without uh, miss uh, without caring which one is executing first okay now any doubt here sarita i have uh, so i am confused here so if we serially uh, execute the task okay so say task one is executed first then task two so serial execution so there say task one is taking one second task two is taking two seconds so total it becomes three seconds okay and now if we use async io say task one uh, completes in one second then task two and we if we await then the actually what is happening like we are awaiting for three seconds itself right actually this is miss we are adding the waiting here uh, you have to think about yeah you are um, you are um, miss writing a code for some uh, miss use task like a where the your main program wa want to read the data from your hard disk it may take a time okay mm -hmm. so in the uh, miss at that time cpu is ideally sitting but in that case if you use a asynchronous function and you create the task then it will call the another method which is independent from the your current execution mm -hmm. So in means in meantime it will execute your uh, another method and once that uh, your uh, reading is completed it's come back to its original work and it will finish that work. I will explain the one of the utility here, real time utility. When I learn the uh, means I uh, know about a uh, synchronization in Python. Okay. So if the total uh, time is uh, being reduced. By the asynchronous call. That's uh, what. Yes, can... actually, uh, Miss, uh, I uh, demonstrate you already. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. it's total uh, Miss. You, you can't say the turnaround time is uh, Miss. Your whole program turnaround time is reduced, but actual execution time will be same. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is using that ideal time uh, in uh, your uh, synchronous program. You are waiting for the someone to be finished. But in that case, you are not waiting. If this task one need a some means of waiting or see, uh, keeping your CPU idle at that time, your task two will start to execution. Okay. And I'm not saying that you every program is a candidate of asynchronous. It mm -hmm. depends on your uh, function, what task you have to do. Is mm -hmm. it a, a is it a good candidate of asynchronous? If some method is running and at that time there is a, some independent method you can do, okay. In daily life, you are, if you are cooking and you are making rice, okay, so you, you don't have to sit uh, in a kitchen for whole time to cook the uh, rice, uh, or you don't have to concentrate on the rice. You can just put the rice to cook. And you can make uh, your vegetable, uh, you can make another uh, food uh, parallelly, okay? Miss, it is not to be the, the rice taking a, miss rice taking a less time to cook. Actually, you are utilizing your idle time in a, so that you can cook the, uh, miss parallelly you are cooking. If you cooking synchronously, it will take around, uh, suppose for making a rice, it will take a one hour and for the next task it will take two hours so your turnaround time here two hour but if you do parallelly it may take around uh, approximately one hour mm -hmm. okay 
So we uh, we learn all exam in this uh, miss um, in all these example we learn the asynchronous I/O. Okay, I think time is over. I uh, it's a high level programming. You can use the loop. I have this. Uh, I'm prepared some example of the loop. How you can create the loop? It's a low level. Uh, you you can use the a synchronous run function instead of creating the loop and invoking that loop okay this is the same thing instead of this line you can use the uh, new event loop set event loop and after that get event loop and run the utility uh, until complete means it is a playing the role like a await okay it's the same thing but our time is over so I am not able to demonstrate. If you have a time, I can explain you these uh, three examples. Let me close this uh, and uh, I will share you this example so that we can be just it is nothing uh, different. So only here we are creating the event loop instead of running the asynchronous uh, function directly. OK, let me come back to our PPT where we are here. Okay. What we learn from this? This tutorial includes the concept of asynchronous programming using the Python async module. The uh, async IO gives us the programmatic control of when we use the context switching. That means we can handle many complex issues that occur with the thread programming. It is a powerful and valuable tool, but only for asynchronous type programming, we have discussed routines and tasks with their respective example we have also discussed managing the event loop and reading and writing the data with this stream in python it is also include uh, essentials method at any issues at your end any doubt no sir these are the some references I use here to make this PPT. Any questions? Mm -hmm. no. no. So can I stop the recording? Yes. Yes. Priya? Hello, Priya. Are you there? No, Priya is not there. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. Okay, okay. please.